more than an extension of the nonconformist attitude of the hippies in the 60s. You'll meet some outspoken punks and their parents this morning on Twin Cities Live. Well, this will be um, this will be what you call a learning experience this morning. We're all going to learn something. Hi, Amy. How are you? Uh, kind of tired. It's kind of well, early. Kind of tired. <laughs> Did you have to stay up all night to do this show this morning? Why would I have to stay up all yeah. night? Some of the some of the kids show? told me that uh, the, they usually aren't up at this hour, so they just stayed up all night to do the show. Yeah. How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen years old. And your folks are out here in the audience with us this morning. Uh, how long have you had your hair like that? <laughs> in this style or? Yeah. This style just for like a year. Yeah. But before that, it's been like two years. What did you do to it anyway? What do you mean, what did I well, do What to is it? that? I mean, how do you get it to do that? Hold on a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, that's... That's stiff. How do you get it to do that? Glue. Glue? We have a picture of uh, Amy. Oh. oh, yeah. We have a picture of... Let's put this up and show everybody, okay? <laughs> this is Amy uh, before held and Amy after. <laughs> That's your little girl. Yep, sure is. <laughs> Did she discuss this with you? No, no, it, this is her own idea. This is just a sort of a development that's been going on two or three years. <laughs> a sort of a development? <laughs> it's evolved <laughs> through many stages. How did it begin? Well, I think she began by shaving one side of her head and bleaching part of it and cutting sort of zigzag stripes in it so that it was a brindle effect, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. You got a cool mom. I mean, now I'm a dad too, and I, I would she think if my... Uh, daughter Sarah came home and said dad I'm gonna shave part of my head and, and brindle it I would say that's pretty interesting Sarah well my wife and I have been involved in theater for 30 years give or take a little and so what I see here is a lot of costume work and it, it's <laughs> technically very good costume work uh, the punks go to an awful lot of trouble to do really first-class first-rate representational art art form are you an art form uh, I'm just myself. I mean, I'm not like, it's not like I go up and I'm, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to be Rembrandt today or something. I mean, it's not like, <laughs> it's not an art form. <laughs> yeah? Well, what, what made you do it? What made me do it? Yeah. I want to be different. It's a statement. It's, it's being different. It's showing society that things that are different aren't necessarily like nasty. People always look at punks and people go, oh, nasty, they cut them down and things like that, and they don't even know what it's all about. Mm -hmm. it's, it's saying that we're different, that we don't have to be like everything else. We don't have to be like the messed up world. Does the, what do you have in your nose? <laughs> it's an earring. Yeah? Does that hurt? No. <laughs> Why would it hurt? Well, I don't know. I never imagined it. <laughs> you think if you put an ear ring in your nose it would hurt no i imagine it's similar to, yeah you yeah i would it would that didn't hurt when you did that no did you do it yourself yeah yeah weren't you kind of aren't you kind of worried that she might get herself sick doing that they try forbid and me to stop do your it. daughter <laughs> Try and stop your Let's meet somebody else. Well, Sarah's a little too young for this, but see, that's what worries me, that I don't know what's coming 10 years from now. I'm doing this right now. Uh, Rachel, how old are you? 16. And how long have you... I don't know. Um, what do you call that? How do you... What I call my hair? Yeah, what do you call it? <laughs> Ratted. What? Ratted. Ratted? I've had it black for yeah. um, a couple months, but I've had it, you know, ratted and stuff for a couple years. Yeah. Have you done it other colors? Yeah, it's been white, purple, blue, um, blonde, red, and black. It's been white, <laughs> purple, blue, blue, 
blonde, blonde, red, and black. All at the same time, or no? <laughs> it was it was blonde and red at the same time, and it was like it went from like lavender to purple to blue to black. How do you do that? I mean, how do where, I dye my hair? I mean, where do you get the stuff to? It's um, it's different stuff. It's a lot of times I just take something like a clothing dye or something and mix it with um, mm -hmm. with a like a regular hair dye. I mean, this is like this is like work to get it to do what you want it to do, isn't it? Well, it kind of is, but it's not It's not any more than, you know, all the girls who have the flips who wake up every morning and spend an hour and a half with a curling iron, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend an hour and a half with curling iron. I just rather, it. it's, you know, mm -hmm. it only takes a couple Where do you get your clothes? Um, different places. They're everywhere. That outfit didn't come from Dayton's, is that what you <laughs> This did. Yeah, the top did? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Brian, how are you? Good. How old are you? Fifteen. We have a before and after picture of you. The way you used to look a couple of years ago, right? Okay. There you go. You're a good-looking kid, Brian. You really are. Were you in Boy Scouts or anything? <laughs> yeah. Huh? What? No. No. What? What? Why? Why not? <laughs> why what? It's good enough reason, but a lot of other kids in your class uh, are not. So why did you? Why should I look like everybody else? Mom is here with us this morning. Why? He's not going to tell me. You tell me what. I think personally he's rebelling against something. <laughs> Everything. Have you talk this over with him? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of these, oh, yes. Uh, Brian, tell me about talking this over with your mom. I don't. <laughs> well, mom says you've talked this over. Does that mean that mom says, Brian, I don't like what well, you're doing? Well, she's talked it over. I haven't. Oh, she's <laughs> talked it over. You have. I just tell him that I don't want to. Do you hope against hope? Every night I pray that it will change. <laughs> oh, God. Do you think that it will? It's going to be a baby home soon. <laughs> Ryan, how old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen years old. What grade in school? Ten. How are your grades? Okay. Okay? <laughs> what do you want to do with yourself? What do you want to be when school's over in a couple of years? I don't know. No, no? Plenty of time to decide? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, also this morning meet uh, Emily McMahon. Good morning. Hi. How are you? Okay. Can we show a before and after picture of you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to anyway, all right? Oh, your friends up here in the audience love that, Emily. They're telling me that... Uh, do you believe you used to look like that? What? Do you believe you used to look like that? Well, obviously I did. <laughs> yeah. But are you but are you ashamed of that at all? Not necessarily ashamed and not proud, but I mean I was <laughs> What made you decide to change the way you look? I didn't. It just happened over the years. I mean, you don't just make up your mind and say, Well, let's do this and one day it just Well that doesn't gradually. happen just over the years without something happening when I mean, you just don't wake up one morning with, is that a pearl in your nose there yeah you don't just wake up one morning with a pearl in your nose I mean, <laughs> if you i had put to it make, there i do you had to make some kind of decisions somewhere along the line that you were different from the other kids in school did she do that i think so in our house we talk a lot about um choices and acceptance and i I guess that's about as far as we've gotten the, as between the teams of par parent and child talking it out. And do you continue to talk it out? Yeah, we do. I think it, it goes one direction or the other. Sometimes I feel like we've talked this out too much and, I'm, and it's, it's getting old. And other times I think as a parent you feel Gee, maybe I should sit down and talk to my child about this, you know. It can go either way. Do, does any of it frighten you at all? Oh, I don't think, a, you know, a real scare. The only thing would be that if Emily's personal choices would start to limit her too much. I don't think 15 is the age you should make a lot of permanent decisions or start to limit yourself. Putting a pearl in your nose is kind of a permanent decision about the way your life's or your face is going to look later on in life, isn't it? Um, well, I suppose, yeah, to a certain extent. That maybe isn't the one I'm the most concerned about. 
You know, I, I would think it could be corrected if you really wanted it to be correct. I'm, I'm not happy with that. Who said that up there? Who said that? <laughs> corrected. You don't want to correct I don't know, it, do you? It's like a disease, well, yeah, you know, so correct like it. It's, it's like something sure. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, please understand that we're not it's, saying that there's we're not saying that there's anything wrong. Cultural. We're not saying that there's anything. Wrong. <laughs> uh, we're just trying. We're just trying to understand, and we're also trying to understand as parents uh, what happens on those. And there have to have been some frustrating nights when you had these times yeah. when you felt like I'm not getting through. Well, I'm not sure if that's exactly how I felt, but you do feel a certain amount of frustration when you. Um, when you don't feel communication is real good between you and your child. Do you feel like the communication is... That happens whether you have a, 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 a person, an, you know, an adolescence in your home. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have... I don't think parents have difficulty only communicating with a child of 15 who's decided to be punk. You know, I think that can happen whether you're wearing guest jeans or a pearl in your nose. And, um, you know, so I'm well aware of that fact. It's it's not always easy being a parent and i think that's a pretty blanket statement but i think that applies to uh, a lot of situations <coughs> let's meet one more of our guests up here on the on the stage this morning good morning good morning how are you this is dave victor who you're the oldest of the group aren't you how old are you 18 18 years old with that group up there how long have you had your hair and done your eyes like that that's not <laughs> I've been doing my eyes like this for about six months. I do did you, them in a different. Do you get up in the before. morning and yeah? Is that mascara? What is that? It's liquid eyeliner. Yeah. So you get up every morning and. Uh, not every morning. It depends if I feel. Do you like sleep in it? No, it's not good for your skin. Yeah. <laughs> so like, uh, like a lot of the other people in this audience at night, uh, you go home and take off your makeup and. Uh, mm hmm. Put on a mud pack and well, he, no. <laughs> he is just Can like every other person, letter. so why shouldn't he? Good morning, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. You're oh. on the air with us. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to know what is the statement that they're trying to make by mm -hmm. appearing like this. And another thing is I'm a mother of two and I'm not much older than these kids here. And I, I think if my kids came home looking like that, I'd take them in the bathroom and I'd scrub their face. It's not gonna work. Oh, they're turning on you now. They don't want to. Yeah, it's it's not like something parents can do anything about. Because if if I went home and my parents scrubbed my face, I'd leave the first thing. You know, it's it's like if if you want to. They, yeah, way, did they put up with it because uh, they're afraid that you're going to run away? To ask them that. I mean, they put up with it because I think they're really cool. But and they no. know that it's no, we don't. Be. We don't put up with it because it's a difference in values. I have different values than Amy does, but that doesn't make mine right and hers wrong. They're just different. Amy was doing a lot of the things at 15 that I couldn't do at 15 overtly. I think that if you, you know, go home and scrub your kid's face, it's just going to make them think, you know, if I'm going to do what I want to do, I can't be at home doing it. So I might as well go out and do it somewhere else, and you're just going to push them away. Good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Right ahead. Good morning. I'll get to um, Hold on. I'm just wondering today if there isn't some kind of a thing that's, that's saying the kids are saying to the parents, I'm going to run you and you're not going to tell me what to do. And I'm wondering if the parents aren't just leaving control go. Why does having the way you look yeah. make it seem like you're Do you all, the five control? of you, feel like your parents are at all in control of your life, of the important things? Well, they have say in it. I mean, until until we're old enough to, like, legally be on our own yeah. they have say but they're not they're not like they don't run our lives but do you look, and they for don't him, but do you look to them for advice sometimes yeah because you know they've been through it it's not like you know every generation has its own rebellion mm -hmm. and some parents were part of that some parents weren't and the people who like say that they're gonna you know like everybody always asks me man what do your parents say about the way you look and it's like, why should I care what they say about the way I look? I mean, their opinion matters to me, but I'm not going to let it run my life. I said, um, what was it I said? <laughs> <laughs> I said, if you, your parents don't talk to you and they scrub your face, you're never, you're never going to come to them when uh, you need the help. Yeah. I mean, I never went to my parents when I was that age, you know, when punk started. 
<laughs> you did what you wanted to do? Yeah, I had to. I couldn't help it. I wasn't going to be like everybody else out in Burnsville wearing preppy clothes and going to a football game. <laughs> I, you know, I was more interested in art. I mean, it's all art to me. I, you know, I, I work on videos. I'm a businessman. I'm an image designer. I create that. But I don't design images for people working in the IDS. And if to be successful in your business, you had to get a haircut and, and do the whole business thing, well, would you do that? came a long time ago. <laughs> a different haircut. Well, yeah, different ones. I mean, I had no hair at times. Well, that's what we're going to talk about this morning, all right? Uh, I, I want you to think about this. Right? Will you look like this forever? Yeah. Will you? Yeah. Everybody over here says, yeah. <laughs> will, you, will you look like this forever? As close as I can. Without hurting the person next to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we're going to talk about that. And we'll talk some more to the parents, and we'll talk with you at home. Stay with us here on Twin Cities Live. Last New Year's Eve, did you make a New Year's resolution to lose weight? If you did and you're having trouble keeping it, you should call the Weight Loss Clinic. We know how to help you make that weight loss resolution come true. When you work with kids all day, you just have to be slim. That's why I went to the Weight Loss Clinic. At the clinic, I lost 56 pounds in 15 weeks. I've gone from a size 20 to a size 14. I have a lot more energy and it feels great. I can't tell you how much the Weight Loss Clinic has improved my life. I have so much more confidence and energy. I lost 40 pounds and went from a pant size 16 to an 11. But best of all, the clinic showed me how to eat the foods I like and still keep my figure. You've made a resolution to slim down for the year ahead, so get started. Call the weight loss clinic near you. Your first 30-minute consultation is absolutely free. We'll tell you exactly how much we can help you lose and how fast. Remember, you did make that New Year's resolution, so call us at the weight loss clinic now. My fellow babies, good news! The Baby Magic people have something terrific for washing off clothes. New Baby Magic Laundry Detergent. It's specially made to get out our spills and messes. You know the one. And it leaves our clothes very soft and fresh. Smell this. If you like clean, fresh clothes, try New Baby Magic. After you talk it over with your mommies. Tough on stains, gentle on babies. New Baby Magic Laundry Detergent. I did it. We all know it's difficult to find that special person to marry and settle down with, but could Mrs. Wright be just a postage stamp away? After all, we've got mail-order diploma schools for that college degree that you want. Why not go shopping for your bride through a mail-order catalog? You can do it. Here's the number to call, 641-1298. Call us for your free tickets to our show tomorrow, and you'll meet some men who sent away for their wives, along with the founder of the nation's leading mail-order bride service. And again, here's the number. 641-1298 for free tickets. Oh, it's one of my favorite songs, I tell you. Uh, <laughs> tell me now about going to school. Do you, do you catch any flack at school from... Uh, from <laughs> uh, all right, talk to us. Tell me about it. Do we catch flack at school? We, we get a lot of stuff from people who, like, in the hallways. It's just mainly, like, people who are of different groups. Like, there are people, you know, I don't want to, like, categorize them. There are people, like, break dancers and people like that who just, <laughs> you know, we, people get beaten up right by school a lot of the time. Do you get beaten up? No, nobody has ever beaten me up. I'm lucky. <laughs> um, it's just, it's kind of scary when you get beaten up right by school, but you can't let it discourage you, but it's like at school, nobody really does anything because it's such a close environment. You know everyone. I mean, you catch a lot of flack. Yes, some school experiences? Much. Do you have any problem at school? The teachers no. are just kind of like, how'd you do that? You know, <laughs> what's happening in your face? How'd you do your hair? You know, but... Most of the teachers aren't that bad. They don't give you much trouble about yeah, it. Yeah, they're pretty good about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think understand. going to school is to learn not necessarily to be hung up on how everyone looks either, so it's that other person's fault. Exactly. So the teachers and the principals uh, a lot of stuff. Are, are not the problem. Oh, well, we have, like, some principals that are really, like, yeah. they do give 
people who look different, they give them more crap than they do anyone else. Yeah. But, you know, if, if, you don't, if you're not making a problem, they can't really do anything. I mean, like, they'll try and suspend you for being defiant. I got suspended once. And I don't know what he was talking what about. What did you do? All I did was tell him that I thought my friends were more important than class. And he said I was defiant and suspended me. So, But, you know, I mean, they'll think of anything they can. But it's they can't really do anything to you. I don't think school teachers are like half as bad as the cops. I mean, the cops are just oh, man. outright prejudiced. <laughs> They're so horrible. They're, the They'll kick you out of anywhere with any excuse, you know, and you say anything and they're like, we're going to arrest you for trespassing. Yeah, like in city like center, in public you place. get kicked out yeah, because city center you, of, you offend them and you say, well, that's, that's um, discrimination. You can't kick someone out because the way they look and they say, well, we can kick anyone we out, out we want, you know, and they'll escort you. They'll wait, they'll get five people and they'll escort mm -hmm. you out. Mm -hmm. And if you understand. say anything, they'll tell you that they're going to arrest you. I'd even understand loitering if it was um, a lot of kids hanging around, you know, and they thought they were kind of a threat to you know, the people there, but like, but when I you're was buying alone, food. and I was like trying to use the phone, and they just, you know, they love it if you're alone. They'll just get, you know, as many cops as they can and just come yeah. up and bug you, you know. Will, will, it, will they hurt you? No, see, they don't, they don't want to look like, you know, they're doing anything wrong. They just want to, you know, sit there and say, you're, you're loitering, um, you're in here when you're not supposed to be, you know, you're trespassing. I mean, how can you be trespassing in a public place when you're trying to use the phone? Mm -hmm. Let's get back to that in a second, all right? Good morning, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. You're on the air with us. Speak I up. have a question about the attitude. Please. Um, they all seem just kind of cocky. <laughs> <laughs> when you ask the them about the hair, there. well, what's wrong with the first girl cocky? about her hair? She just, she just got kind of cocky with you. Like, what's different about it? Well, obviously, it is different. I mean, let's. Be well, different. obviously, it, it is. is. I mean. Well, he asked Obviously, the we want to be different. If he asks the question, we're going to answer it however we want. And if we're cocky and you don't you don't agree with us being cocky, that's fine. Well, no, I don't what he was what asking you was how you did your hair, and you just kind of said, "Well, how did I do what?" Like you did. Well, he did obvious. not specify. I mean, what do you mean? How did I do my hair? How did I shave it? How did I cut it? How did I dye it? How did I stick it up? You know, I mean, what does he want to know? He didn't say. I'm sorry, I should have been a lot more specific. Uh, how do you shave it? How do you get it to stand up like that? <laughs> And how did you get it all those colors? I don't know. There, there is an element of cockiness in this. Well, now, come on, give us a break. Well, we're just, we're so used we're to getting black. Time. I mean, why shouldn't we be cocky? Does that make you cocky? If you were walking down the street and no policeman bothered you and no, no grown-up or no adult ever said, would you uh, be peace-loving and quiet well, and that's never the cocky? Well, you have to kind of expect people to, you know, look at you. And it's... It's not bad if you walk in some place and people kind of turn around. But when they turn around and point and laugh and look really annoyed, I mean, that gets you really, you know, cocky or whatever. What happens, when they, no, I mean, what happens what when they turn around and laugh and get really annoyed? Do you get right back in their faces again? Well, no, you just, just look at them and they don't turn around. And it's like, you know, they're acting like I'm rude and I have no right to be there. You just have to think how rude they are and how stupid they look themselves because, I mean, a lot of people will sit there and they'll go, like, old women will always be telling me how insecure I am. And I think, I'm like, yeah, I'm really insecure. I'm so insecure that I go out and I do my own thing and I look different. I mean, I think the ones that are insecure are the ones that all have to look like their best friends. You've got to admit, though, that for a lot of people, you invite criticism. I mean, the way you Why? invite but that's the thing. invites yeah, criticism because most people don't what? You start the show by antagonizing her. I mean, what does she, I mean... When you start the show by saying, how did you do that to your hair? How did you get Well, that's not that necessarily way? antagonizing. I mean, that's, no, that's how... that's just a common viewpoint. That's right, common. but that's... But still, him viewing it to you, yeah. personally, that's... Yeah, how do you do that to your hair? Yeah, I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, I do that on the show sometimes. How did you do that to your... That's just plain hairspray. <laughs> People get upset. Yeah, they do, but why should I care if they get upset? What ha what's the end, though? What's the end? We can understand that you shouldn't get upset if they get upset. But what's the end result? I mean, if, you're, if you get cocky right now and you get a little belligerent right now, what happens five years from now? Do you then get violent? Well, you could be violent Why now. would my yeah. be, yeah, I Why could would be violent. Five years Why would that difference? mean I was violent? I mean... If you have to take it for so long, don't you eventually get fed up with it? High it might invite some sort of criticism, but listen to what they're saying about how they get treated. Right? I mean, I think they're performing two valuable functions. First of all, 
rock is theater, punk is theater, and it, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best show in the city. The other thing is that if it weren't for these people, we're in danger of thinking that this country is all we are the world and hands across the desert. It's not. There's a dark underside to it, and they, it's there. Dark underside. Now we're the dark underside. <laughs> How do you feel about this dark underside? Um, I'm confused a little bit. I'm the mother of two huge football players, and uh, <laughs> I was a little curious. Do they are they any any one of them involved in any sports in school? I mean, could you get a football helmet over this or? You know? They um they often won't let us on the sports teams and stuff. They'll um, kick you off. If you, yeah, you, but you when the team gets mohawks or shaves their head, it's cool. Unless, yeah. but it has to be all of them doing it. If they right. don't all do it, no one can do it. It's, it's not even worth anything then, if they're all going to do it the same. It's just, I mean, you can't, it's not right that they kick people off teams for cutting their hair because it shouldn't matter what they look like, but they do it. And they say it's a distraction. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They don't, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're wearing a football helmet, how can people be distracted by your hair? <laughs> Good morning, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Yeah, I, yes, sir. Um, I, there's two questions I'd like to, or two points. One point is I don't think they're being, I don't think they're being cocky at all. I think that uh, they're they're being, def they're protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. um, the second part is that I, I think they should more questions should be directed to their parents. I think at well, what do you point, want to ask their parents? Well, in some point in their lives, I have a small child, and I try to make this child feel important. Mm -hmm. It, that she has a role in society and in our lives. I think that maybe their parents have been either too busy. No, having... I don't think you can blame our parents for the way we look. I think a lot of people are going, oh, you look like that because your parents, you think your parents don't care, and you think your parents haven't made you feel important, and I think that's bull, because a lot of people go, oh, I blame society for the way I look, and it's like, yeah. you, can't, you, you can't blame anyone. You look the way you want to look, and you can't blame your parents. I mean. It's nothing to blame. I mean, you can sit there and you can look at, er at all these girls that all look the same and you can say, oh, they all look the same because their parents made didn't them feel, made they, had them feel they had yeah. to. You know, I mean, you can't really blame your parents for the way we look because my parents have always made me feel important. Do you feel like a successful parent? Yes, very much so. Amy is free with our support to express whatever she needs or feels she has to, spread, uh, to express. And what more can a parent ask for? I have never expected a child to do what I told it to do because I'm not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are, you know? Right. <laughs> but what do you want for her in five or ten years? Self-fulfillment. She's very talented. She's very clever. She's very caring. She's very talented. And when she finally gets in touch with those things, fine. She will do whatever she does that makes her tick and makes her feel good. And when that happens, any parent has to look at it and say, gee, maybe I would have picked for you to be a lawyer so you'd be rich and successful, but you're happier being an um, aviary keeper. Fine, keep an aviary. I'm not interested at all in my children fitting into a pattern or a mold. I'm much more interested in my children being happy. We respect you for that. We really do. But we also have to ask you, isn't there like a time, maybe once a month, when you put your head on the pillow at night and you think, God, I hope she grows out of this? No, my only hope is that she gets through this stage without some kind of physical harm. And that physical harm will come from outside, will come from attacks, from rednecks and narrow minds and the conservative <laughs> element right. in the in the city. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. What's so funny about being female? This Thursday on Twin Cities Live, seven of the Twin Cities' top comedians will clue you into the lighter side of life as a woman in the 80s. And they're going to show you how to laugh in the face of diets and divorce and dishes and dating. If you really want to have some fun this coming Thursday morning, give us a call right now at 641-1298 for your free tickets right here to Twin Cities Live. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Dave, uh, how did this whole punk movement get started? Did it begin as what? Heavy metal or what's the difference between heavy metal and light metal and punk and all that other? And where did the Beatles go? And, uh... <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> well, it depends on which type of music what? you're talking about. Because if you're going like rebellious groups, are, well, are you, you going? About? Are you going punk? Are you talking about the kind of music? Or well, I guess what we want to know is: uh, is it music, or is it a lifestyle, or is it an art lifestyle. form, or what it's, is? It? It's a lifestyle. It's an attitude. It's the way. You, it's the way. You know, the person wants to be. It's not like. It's not just listening to the music or just cutting your hair. You. You know, it's. It's not like you go out one day and say, oh, I shaved the side of my head, therefore I am punk. <laughs> but did you just, uh, was it in the songs that you heard? <laughs> no, not really. Listen to the devil. Cut your hair. You know, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people who say the songs are ruining the kids, you know, and they said that when we were listening to Elvis. Well, listen to Jerry Falwell. Change then. has to come from within yeah. to, for an outward appearance, and if it's, just a change within that's still okay but these songs are outward influences I meant some influences do but like all this record banning crap well it's songs just are expression of it kids, all the kids grow up and make the song right and they're expressing you know what happened to them and if other kids can relate to it you know that's cool but it's not like this song told me to go out and cut my hair, so I did. Mm -hmm. That's what Falwell thinks, but you know. <laughs> and some of the punk groups have uh, have changed their songs in the last uh, couple of years. Their music is well, becoming more melodic. And you don't expect them to like play or, one thing all the time. They change with the times, just as people do. <laughs> but good morning. You're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. You're on the air with us. Speak up. Yes, I was wondering if if these kids were um, popular in school and. Uh, <laughs> before they did their hair or were they just the kind that were kind of unnoticed until they until they did something to the hair to get a little more attention or, or show who they were? I was popular in school, sort of, to a point because everybody knew me but not everybody was my friend. I mean, I wasn't in the yearbook constantly, page after page. Yeah. But, in fact, I was only in there twice. <laughs> for what? One for a band photo and one for a um, senior <laughs> picture. I don't think it really matters to any of us if we're popular at school. I mean, it's like, you've got oh, friends. Oh, come on, Amy, wouldn't you like to be prom queen? Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> yeah. Come give on. Just give it up, man. What? <laughs> don't even sit. You don't want to do that. Huh? I mean, I've got a lot of friends. I've got friends at school, you know, from all different sort of groups, and it, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I don't go around going, oh, my God, I'm not popular. What can I do? You know, I mean... It doesn't matter. The friends that matter are the friends who care. Yeah. If you, so you do something and somebody just doesn't dislike you because you have a different haircut. Do you find that you have closer friends now than you did before? I find that your friends are more real because if they can't... If you have friends who don't look like you and they can't take the way you look, then they're not your real friends. They're you know, sure. I have a lot of friends who don't, you know, aren't punk at all. That I've known for a long time. What, I, what I'd like to know is if is this thing with the punkers is drug orientated i mean you know do is there a drug scene that goes on yes yes there's, there's a drug scene yes yeah you know everyone's messed up all the time group. <laughs> there's drugs in every group yeah there's drugs in every group yeah there's drugs in every group i think he's uh, putting you on a little bit well, will you, you talk to you us about this businessmen doing coke you do you see common people doing coke you see rich businessmen a lot of doing people doing think that that the only reason people would do their hair is like that is because they're on drugs, they're on drugs, oh my god, they must be crazy, you know? And it's like, no, I don't think it's drug-oriented. <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of people do drugs, but it doesn't make you do, it doesn't make you cut your hair or anything. Yeah. There are a lot of There's this thing going around that we all live at 10th and Harmon, and everybody's saying that uh, everybody at this place does heroin. <laughs> they were saying this at the CC Club, and one of the people that lives there walked by and said, they're not doing heroin, they can't afford to do heroin. <laughs> so I don't know where they come up with the idea that everybody's on drugs. There's a bigger likelihood of being more people on drugs who work in this building because they, can, like you said, can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I, I've been in this, what, so-called punk scene for 10 years. I mean, 
all I become is a starving artist, but at least I'm happy in the things I do. Well, you know, you got to understand that, that the rest of the world sees it, and, and they've got to be nervous about that, right? Why? Well, it's like you have certain kinds of people, and if they want to do drugs, they'll do drugs. And um, punk has nothing to do with drugs. You know, it's like I just got out of treatment for drugs, and people still accept me. You know, I can be cool without being stoned all the time. So. And are your friends supportive? Yeah. They help you out? Yeah. Um, Wait a minute. Go ahead. I think what it has to do with is that people think it's a big zero to be, quote, different. So they want to put it with another big losing thing, which is drugs. So if, if they see someone that's different, they'll normally associate it with another thing that's very taboo. So do you think that's what those policemen are doing downtown who hassle you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll ask the blacks in Africa, you know, South Africa. I mean, you know, you, it's just different people. You know, um, when someone comes here from Nigeria, they don't stare at them and ask them, why are you dressed in your African style? I mean, they accept them that way. You know, we have our own culture. We're just, we didn't learn to dress by television commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's another thing, too, about the, the idea that the, the punks are on drugs. And that is that the people that say the punks are on drugs are really saying, I could only do that if I was stoned. And that's a limitation on the mind of the person who makes the judgments. They won't be scared to be different in any way. They're afraid of it. My parents are that way, you know, but um, now they look at me, I'm, I'm 23. They're seeing that I, I, I am not gonna- You're turning out. Bad. You know. We gotta take a break, all right? Stay with us, we'll be right back. Don't go away. Nice, typical suburban family. Not my car. <laughs> Borrow the car for the day. I, I, we have to ask you though, uh, and we don't want to, we don't want to pry too much. But what happens when you go to visit grandma and grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> they asked my mother to put Amy in the dark spot in the country club. <laughs> yeah, and she didn't have her hair up. My mother, who is 81 years old, is the mayor of her hometown, Jacksonville, Illinois and is the leader of the family rebellious spirit. <laughs> That's the best way I can say. And we all went out to the country club and the, the uh, hostess came over to my mother and said, well, put her back in the uh, corner there. Uh, and she did not even have her hawk up like that. She just had real short hair. It wasn't even green. One of my grandmothers thinks I'm a boy, so <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for real. Yeah. So, so there are times when, when you do let it down? It's not like it stands up all, all the time, you know? Yeah. I mean, it would be really boring if I had it up all the time. It, it gets annoying to have it up all the time. You gotta take the stuff out of it every once in a while. Good morning, you're on Twin Cities Live. Go right ahead. Hi, I have two questions. Go ahead. First one is, do any of the punks work? And the <laughs> second one is in the future, when it comes time to have to get out on your own and mom and dad cut the purse strings. I have a feeling they're going to be what purse in drink? for a real slap on the face when they have to face reality and try to figure out their own way of life. Okay, okay go ahead. Is it hard to get a job? What? Is it hard to work? It's, it's hard to get a job, but I mean, like, I know what I want to do when I get out of school, and I'm, I'm you know, trying to do that right now without working because Are I want... Are there people who won't hire you? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, always yeah. going to be but, people like Dayton's won't hire us. Yeah. I'm in well, but who wants to work in Dayton? Yeah. <laughs> but have you ever, have you ever been let go from a job because of the way? No, you... I, I actually quit a job. My boss was the one. He kept on telling me to dye my hair purple, and I quit because I, I was sick of the old, old habit of it. Now I don't have a job, and I'm on my own. Um, a couple of years ago, I was fired. I used to work as a receptionist, and it was because I bleached my hair blonde. But since then. I mean, people, I mean, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I want to do. Right now, I'm, I, I'm keeping up my grades. I do whatever I want. Right now, I'm going to play. I mean, I, it doesn't really matter what you look like on how you're going to achieve. 
But there are some people who don't well, understand yeah, that in job situations. The people, that... like customers and things, don't like you. Um, well, I do live on my own, and I work at Dayton's, but down in the basement, so they can't see me. They keep you in the basement? <laughs> yeah, well, it, yeah, and I can um, have my hair any color I want or look however I want. But when you do support yourself, it is hard. A lot of people are very conservative and prejudiced about who they hire. It's ridiculous. Um, I think when you ask about futures, right now is our future. Also, you can't, you can't go around thinking about what's going to happen in five or ten years yeah, because ten you might not be alive in five or ten years. Ronnie may drop the bomb. Ronnie may drop the bomb. <laughs> You know, what you are gotta, you all? What you are you all? What, you got to do what you want to do right now because there might not be tomorrow to do it. Which is another thing is is this is just like not holding back on what you want to do. Are you all political? <laughs> are you? I think so. Yeah. I don't think I am. Right. I don't. I don't really like government, but I mean I can live with it if that's. Would the, we be better off without government? Mm -hmm. yeah, no. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> right. It depends on. You know, what kind of people? People actually run the society, like it or not. We we'd be all out better without people like Reagan, but we you know all out anarchy wouldn't work either. I know. I mean you know. I was just wondering what you'd be doing if you lived like out in the suburbs. Would you be doing the same things where I live? There are no punkers at all. Would you be doing the same thing, or would you find it another way to rebel? Yeah, there's a better way to live. Does punk work in the suburbs? Does punk yeah, work I've in a diner? I've lived in Burnsville for six years, and I've had my hair like this for three years. Burnsville, I mean, like way out in the suburbs. <laughs> oh yeah, small towns I mean, like yeah. Little places, yeah, I've been out to them. Yeah, they go into pure shock when they see it. I just moved recently from a small town, and the young teenagers are making a statement. They're no different from what we made when we were teenagers. We were rotten teenagers. I mean, we had a bold attitude, and I think we turned out okay. I see no difference. You made some pretty strong Well, you say turned maybe. out okay, though. I mean, is that saying that we're not okay right now? No, no, no. Is, I think I went through what you're going through. I was my own self. I wasn't... I wasn't, you know, the beauty school queen or whatever, but um, I was my own person, you know, and I think we all go through this, you know, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. Yeah. <laughs> If this doesn't stop people from asking me for Butcher's Blend dog food, nothing will. Ah, lady, the Butcher's Blend is in the dog food section. Can't you read English? Excuse me, monsieur. Où est le Butcher's Blend? Uh, please don't bother the butcher. Butcher's Blend brand has a variety of tastes. Beef, bacon, and liver. The three meaty tastes your dog loves. Comrade D is the Butcher's Blend. Huh? For three meaty tastes in beef, bacon, and cheese flavor, too. Please don't bother the butcher, huh? Nice doggy. There was a time my dieting led to meals with only thin sliced bread. It left me feeling hungry for more. And now, Weight Watchers made me free to eat a thick sliced bread that can't be beat. It's got the taste of freedom, that's for sure. Oh yeah, the taste of freedom. A 40 calorie slice, Joy Weight Watchers bread. A thick delicious bite. Oh yeah, the taste of freedom. Fulfills your appetite. Freedom. Weight Watchers new thick sliced bread. Enjoy the taste of freedom. What is team spirit? It's the extra effort that keeps Bob Vernon involved from beginning to end. Bob Vernon brings his own special style to the Eyewitness News update. Bob Vernon, another reason to turn to the people who deliver the news and a little bit more every day and every night. That's team spirit. That's the new team spirit. Watch the new team spirit. There are many places to meet men. Single bars are probably the most popular, and a few months ago we showed you how to meet men in the grocery store. But this coming Friday, we'll show you that the workplace is a much more fertile hunting ground for potential mates than single bars ever were. If you want to find out how to meet Mr. Wright at work, join our studio audience this coming Friday. Here's the number to call, 641-1298. Think about it. You spend 50% of your waking hours at work, so why can't work be a great place to meet men? Call us again at 641 641- one, two, nine, eight.
right, go right ahead. Okay, I wanted to direct this one to Dave. And you're 18, that's yeah. the age of a lot of us here. And we were wondering if, have you thought about going to college or anything? Yeah, I planned it. I mean, it's very coincidental because like I've recently sent away for the forms for Normandale. And mm. I want to do something with my life. I mean, I'm not doing anything now because I choose not to. Do you think that dressing punk or does that affect the way schools look at you when you apply to go to college? college? No. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. It is paper. It's your educational value and the way you learn. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who else did I miss over here? I promised I'd get some more people on this side of the room. And how do you feel watching all this today? You've got the two kids who are big football players. What if, those, what if one of those kids came home and said, Mom, I'm going to dye my hair purple? Well, I know my sons. I know they wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, well, what if they did, though? Yeah. That, would, that would be their thing. I couldn't. Six, six, and six, seven. I'm not going to kick them out. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to argue with them at all. Okay. All right. I just want to say that um, a lot of times my parents, they worry about the people I hang around with sometimes because a lot of them, you know, I have my friends that are punkers and I have my friends that aren't. And they're more concerned about how people are... Are you a secret punker? Wait a minute. <laughs> do, you, do you pass as punk on Saturday night? Or? No, I have my days. I don't go to real wide, wild extremes, but my parents a lot of times are concerned about what people are going to think of me because of who I hang around with and it really bothers me. I don't like yeah, it. I think everybody think. can be who they are, the way they want to be, and you shouldn't judge people by how they look. Exactly. It's the person inside, not the person on the How do you yeah. convince your parents people do so you have to learn to do I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. We feel comfortable with the way we are, so why shouldn't other people feel comfortable with the way we are? Yeah. You don't explain <coughs> nothing to your parents. Nobody ever could. Nobody ever will. We never could when we were kids. Who's got something right back there? Go ahead. I got a question. Since you, you're not doing anything right now, do you have any visual things that, like if you want to get into theater or oh. if you're deciding well, I, to go back to school? Or Presently, I'm doing a fashion show. And you're modeling what? I'm modeling clothes in a, quote, punk segment. Okay, is it more design? Is it more, it's not like zippers everywhere? Or no, it's hair. You're just, it's, it's just up a hairstyle for the last 10 years. Hairstyles. And Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I think it's fun. Um, we hadn't changed the music, but besides that, everything's hunky-dory. Does music have a lot to do with, the, with your mood on how you dress or how you more or less interact with other people? Do you have your own certain type of music that you only listen to? Yeah, I think I do. I I don't think I don't think a lot of punks listen to all just hardcore. Yeah, you just yeah. You you listen to a lot yourself. of different stuff. All I have to say, and it's I think it's important to realize this, is that maybe I'm not going to be accepted by anybody. I could change the way I look, but I do want people to treat me in a passive way. I don't like getting beat up. I don't like getting hurt, and I don't like it. You know, sometimes I get a lot of snotty remarks, and I don't see why I can't just step out of the house and look the way I want to look without getting hurt. Brian, did anybody ever hurt you? Did anybody ever beat up on you? I got hit a couple times. Yeah? By whom? I don't know. I don't know. They were there real big. That's all I know. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> By the jocks? Yeah. Burn home. Jocks. Mm -hmm. Heavy metalers. Heavy metalers? What's the difference, uh, Brian, between a... What's the difference between... Oh, wait a minute here. We're getting into a little discussion on... What's the difference between heavy metal and punk, Brian? What's the difference? Not that much. What? <laughs> Up here, what? Heavy metal is much cooler. Well, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. We, we need a definition other than just heavy metal is the best. What is heavy metal? Uh, heavy metal is, um... Oh, shut Not up, Al. <laughs> basic strong rock. Uh, what's the difference, Amy, between uh, heavy metal and, and punk, anyway? You're asking me? I mean, I think, I think heavy metalers are trying to say just as much. It's just not such... It's not as fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's, the beat is faster in hardcore. I mean, it, they're both making a statement, and they're not really very different, except for hardcore is more against society. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us here on Twin Cities Live.
If you would like to be a member of the Twin Cities Live studio audience, please call us for free tickets at 641-1298. Like faded jeans that feel just right A comfy towel that hugs you tight Cotton D's Bob Cotton Mel Is one of the comforts of all Cotton Mel bathroom tissue Of course it isn't cotton, but it is cottony soft Snuggling on a soft thick rug When you're small, a big bear hug Cotton D's Bob Cotton Mel Is one of the comforts of all Hearts express beauty, caring, and love. Introducing the Hearts Collection for that special someone, you. First, receive the beautiful Hearts Pendant. This lovely, one-of-a-kind style heart and chain enhances the beauty that is only yours. Also receive the classically elegant Hearts Earrings. And lastly, the dazzling Hearts Ring that will inspire compliments from everyone. All designed for you. Yours only if you order now for the incredible low price of $19.98. Makes a fabulous gift, too. The beautiful Hearts Collection. For that special someone, you. Here's how to order. To receive your beautiful Vanderbilt Hearts Collection, call toll-free 1-800-672-2800. That's 1-800-672-2800. Or save COD charges and send $19.98 for the four-piece Hearts Collection to Vanderbilt Hearts Collection, Post Office Box 8, Belrose, New York, 11426. Please specify ring size. Include three fifty dollars for postage and handling. We've only got about a minute left here. Um, I'd like to know that now that people have seen this and seen what we feel and what we're like, how many people will actually just turn their head and think about us as people when they see us on the street? You know, will you think about them as people when you see them on the street? Yeah. Yeah. No, they want to hear that. All right, Marla. We thank you all. I, it, it takes uh, some courage to come down here and do a show like this this morning and uh, get out of bed at this hour and come down here and do this and Amy and Rachel and all of you we we thank you for coming down here to, to be with us this morning well, we have all is, learned you know a lot. showing people something that we're not just like the scum of the earth or something because you know a lot of people will just sit there and look at us like that I, I don't think that the what I think like the collars are still gonna feel pretty much the same but at least at least we tried, you know. I think the caller is still going to be going, well, I'll scrub my kid's face if they ever look like you, but, you know, at least we tried. Yeah. We have an intense lifestyle. You have what? We have a real intense lifestyle, but we have a heck of a lot more fun than anybody else on the Yeah. 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 Well, you've given us quite a fun morning, and we thank you for all of it. See you tomorrow morning. Have a nice day. No, wait. i got to get you and dining provided by the Radisson University Hotel, 615 Washington Avenue Southeast on the University of Minnesota East Bank campus. Limousine service for the guest of Twin Cities Live provided by Henderson Chauffeur Cadillacs. Hair and makeup provided by the Hair Forum, Westbrook Mall, Brooklyn Center. Minneapolis fosters communist tendencies. They have been investigated. I know four people who have been exposed as KGB who are working at WLOL. It's nothing but pinko commie coming out of this station. You want to let this verbal musical pour into your living rooms? Well, keep listening, because this is going to destroy everything. Who doesn't listen to WLOL? Do something now while you still can, while there's still time. Punk scene in the Twin Cities. For many of these teenagers, punk represents the kind of music they enjoy, the way they dress, or even their political views. Pat Miles has put together this report. Pat? Dave, because I grew up in the hippie era, I began this report by trying to compare my own generation to that of the punk scene and found out that you really can't. 
The only similarity is that these are teenagers who want to be different, who believe that things are not all that they should be in this world. But these are not kids who talk about love and flowers or communes. They talk more about violence, their aggressions, and reality. <laughs> to experience the dimensions of the local punk scene, we went to a weekend gig in St. Paul. The Willful Neglect, a Twin Cities band, was playing to a crowd of hardcore punkers. They distinguished themselves as hardcore because of the fast, hard-driving political music and the rough way they danced to it. This is called slam dancing or skanking. It's a sea of bodies hysterically crashing into one another, pushing and shoving like carnival bumper cars. If it looks violent, it sometimes can be. There are stories of kids being punched or leaving the dance floor with broken ribs. But the dancers will tell you that the violence isn't carried out onto the streets. This is where they act out their aggressions. We're not a bunch of drug-crazed, violent, you know, idiots. <laughs> We're regular people just having a good time. We just don't want to fit in with the fashion crowd or anything like that. This is more real. This is more street level. More, you know, down to the roots of it for regular yourself. people. The phenomena of punk began in the mid-70s among England's working-class youngsters, where it took bizarre and often violent forms. The music shouted things of violence and suicide. But who cares? began in England has come to America in a much more middle-class form. Our self-styled punkers have certainly learned how to dress the part, but for many of these teenagers, like 16-year-old April Christofferson of Eden Prairie, it is merely a fashion statement. In fact, she says she's afraid of the violence of punk. I've been to places where they're sitting there punching each other out and there's blood all over and it's just, you know, I, I don't get into that at all. And sticking razor blades in myself or crochet needles in my chest, I just not what I would do. For those kids into hardcore, April and her friends are called posers, people they don't like, kids who are in it for the show. 15-year-old David Roth of Kenwood in Minneapolis became involved with punk while he was living for a year in England with his parents. He says he liked the music and its message. The songs, with titles like Life is Ugly, So Why Not Kill Yourself, or Rat Music for Rat People, make sense to him. They write the lyrics because, you know, it's the world they live in now. I don't feel, I don't feel that, you know, they just write them because they want to be violent or something. They feel them because they see it going around, around them, and they, a lot of the times they live it, too. David goes to school at Southwest but says he doesn't like it. And many of the students there make fun of his so-called punk views. When he's not in school, he spends time with friends listening to hardcore music, shooting blow darts, or working on his own comic book. Unlike a lot of parents with punk children, David's family has been supportive. They are quite naturally frightened by some of the violent images associated with punk, but his mother believes it's normal for David to feel alienated. David's father fought his son's punk attire and attitude, then decided he was wrong to do that. I think it is scary um, to, have your uh, to have your values challenged in your own family. Uh, probably because you're not always terribly secure about mm. those values. Mm. And so you'd like a, an atmosphere of reinforcement around you. Dr. Susan Erbau, who works with adolescents at the University of Minnesota, sees it as part of the nature of youth to rebel. But she also believes there is a dangerous tendency with punk to focus on evil and violent instincts. I find it troublesome the extent to which these young people are willing to go uh, in the direction of self-mutilation, in the direction of expressions of sadistic and, and uh, destructive kinds of impulses and behaviors. Um, and I certainly th see those as having uh, potential to be, be dangerous, particularly to the vulnerable members of that age group. Well, let me leave you with this thought. I did find the young people involved in punk a thoughtful, concerned group of kids who are worried about growing up, finding jobs, and making their way in this world. And I guess, Dave, that is something that we can relate to. In that sense, we see no change from generation to generation in that particular...